Hey everyone, this is Sean, and I am inviting you once again to join me on my journey through the unofficial Batman Trivia Challenge. Um, we got through the first 75 questions at the end of last video. I'm currently scoring a 58 out of 75, which is kind of a high C. Um, I am very curious to hear you how you guys are doing with this. As usual, I invite you guys to follow along as I go through the answer key. I have not looked at the, looked at the answers yet, so um, we'll be going through these together as per usual. And uh, I wish you all luck. So we're going to do question 76 through 100 today. So question 76. At one point, Batman engaged in the Thogal ritual as part of a journey to reconnect with his original ideals and purpose. In what comic book series was the Thogal ritual first shown? I'm not sure on this, but the first place I am I became familiar with it was in 52. And I think that was... It's all really fuzzy because there's so many characters in that story, but I feel like that was part of... Was that part of Montoya and um, the question storyline? Or maybe it tied in with the Batwoman thing? I, I can't remember for sure, but I think 52 is where that first appeared. That's, that's my guess, anyway. And that's correct. 52 is correct. Okay, question 77. In the story arc JLA New World Order, Batman was able to single-handedly take out multiple super-powered aliens who had already defeated and captured Green Lantern, The Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and through trickery, Superman. What weakness had Batman discovers, discovered in his enemies? Um, that was fire. Martian Manhunter's problem. And... They were afraid of fire, which also caused them to lose their powers. So there you go. Uh, question 78. What does the white Martian race call Batman? I do not know. Uh, there's four possible choices. A, the dark one. B, the hated one. C, the detective. And D, the knight. Knight with a K. Um, I'm going to just go out on a limb and guess A, the dark one. But I, I don't know. 78... B, the hated one. So there you go. Got that one wrong. Down. Okay. Whoa. Two right, one wrong. So not doing so hot. We'll see how it goes. 79. Bruce Wayne dated Pamela Isley for several weeks before encountering her as Poison Ivy. True or false? That's false. Um, Poison Ivy's first appearance. She's right smack on the cover as Poison Ivy. There's no build up to that whatsoever. Um, that was like issue 160 something, if I remember right. Uh, question 80. According to Batman Dark Victory, when did Bruce Wayne first meet gangster Carmine Falcone? Um, he met them at the funeral of Thomas and Martha Wayne. And... Met them at his parents' funeral. So, same difference. Question 81. The Thogal ritual involved Bruce being trapped in a cave without light or sound for 49 days. What experience was this meant to simulate? Death. Um, and that is... I'm sure, but we'll double check. Yes, Steph. They really want to talk about the Thogal ritual. There's another question here coming up with that. Um, question 82. Just in case he encounters superhumans with heightened senses, Batman lined his cowl with lead to block X-ray vision and created a device to mask the sound of his heartbeat. Is this true or false? Now, if you're ever unsure about these, you can always just kind of assume that it's true. <laughs> he has every gadget imaginable, so I put true. And... Um, Yes, that's correct. True. Question 83. After the ritual in the cave mentioned in question 81, Batman decided to create a backup personality in his mind, an alternate persona who would take over his mind if he became completely dominated by the will of another or he suffered a complete psychological breakdown. What was the inspiration for this programmed identity? Um, that identity is Zur and R, of course, from the famous or infamous Grant Morrison run, and um, that's from the dreams used the things, visions he was having in the cave. And the answer they give, his hallucination about meeting another Batman on a planet called Zur NR. So that's basically correct. Um, question 84. In post-crisis continuity, Julie Madison was seen dating Bruce in what miniseries by Matt Wagner? That would be Batman and the Monster Man. He only had two miniseries and... That was the first one. She might have been in the second one, too, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I even read all of the second one. Um, Batman and the Monster Man. 
Question 85. After Batman's back was broken by the criminal Bane, Alfred needed to explain Bruce Wayne's very noticeable injuries and disability. What was the cover story? Um, this is a multiple choice question. A. Bruce had been playing polo and was thrown from his horse, falling down a steep hill. B. Bruce had been skiing when an avalanche had forced him off a cliff. C. While rock climbing, Bruce hadn't properly secured his harness. And D. Bruce had accidentally driven one of his sports cars off of the road. D is the answer. He was in a sports car accident. And that's correct. Question 86. On the anniversary of the death of his parents, what does Bruce Wayne do when he visits the spot where they died? Um, so I put he leaves two red roses. Um, I There could be more than one answer to this, though, I feel like. Um, but yeah, I mean, he leaves a rose for his father and his mother, basically. That's my understanding. Um, 86. He places roses on the spot where they fell using either two long stem roses or a wreath. So there you go. I guess sometimes he uses a wreath as well, but that question's correct. Question 87. In the miniseries mentioned in question 84, what profession did Julie Madison hold when she met Bruce? Um, so this one, I don't know. Uh, and it's multiple choice. We'll kind of go through them. A, she was a waitress, waitress who was studying acting, which I guess would be a tie back to her golden age roots, which, and that's actually answer number D, she was a professional actress. That's what she was originally. B, she was a law student. C, she was a lounge singer. Um, I honestly don't remember. So I'm assuming it's not the acting ones, unless she's a waitress, but it, it doesn't seem like Bruce Wayne would be dating a waitress. So she could be a lounge singer or a law student. We'll go with that she was a law student. I feel like lounge singer doesn't sound right to me. I feel like he could be dating a law student, maybe. I don't know how he'd meet her, but, well, let's see. Um, B. Law student. Okay, there you go. She was a law student, everyone. Uh, question 88. For some time, Batman had a ring with a kryptonite stone. Who was the original owner of this ring? Lex Luthor. I think everyone knows that. Um, question 88. Lex Luthor. Yep. Uh, question 89. In Detective Comics 308, the story entitled The Flame Master featured a criminal named Pete Dale using mystical relics to gain fantastic power. Batman then turned the tables on him by using the relics himself. What kind of power did these items give Batman? I don't have it clue. So I got this one wrong, guys. No multiple choice on this one. Um, he commanded the four elements, fire, water, earth, and air. Huh, interesting. Um, question 90. What strange story, later referenced in Batman R.I.P., was the first to feature a Batman costume with a yellow symbol? Um, that was the one where he was the super being of Planet X or whatever. Um, Batman, the, uh, okay, the correct answer is Batman, the Superman of Planet X. That's the name of the story. And, um, that's, of course, the Zerenar, which is a callback, except it's a hallucination in Grant Morrison's version of it. Um, question 91. For a while, Batman comic book stories featured Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson living with a woman they called Aunt Harriet. Whose aunt was she? She was Dick Grayson's. Um, I'm pretty sure she's not Bruce's, so Dick Grayson's. Dick Grayson's. We're actually doing pretty good here, guys. I've got two wrong so far. Making up some ground. Nice. Okay, question 92. When he announced the formation of Batman Inc. to the press, how did Bruce Wayne explain his association with the Dark Knight? This is pretty recent continuity, so I'm not going to read all the different choices because it's they're all, like, very wordy. Um, but the correct answer would be B. Uh, he said that he had secretly been funding Batman's activities and providing him, with, providing him with the resources for years and had now decided to be open about it. Which should be correct. Yes, correct. Um, question number 93. In post-crisis continuity, it was revealed that young Bruce Wayne lived with a relative for two years after the death of his parents, but then he left that home when he found out the relative was a criminal. Um, I guess that could be true, but I've never heard of that happening. So I'm going to say that's false. I mean, he was raised by Alfred, right? 
So, no. <laughs> and that is false, so correct. Question number 94. In one strange 1950s adventure, Batman got into legal trouble when it was discovered that a circus performer had been using the Batman name in a similar costume for years before Bruce ever began his war on crime. I don't have any idea. I don't feel like they would have done lawyer drama in the 1950s, but I could be wrong. But I'm going to say false. 94 is true. So there you go. Uh-oh, another one wrong, guys. Three wrong. Question 95. In Batman number zero, it was revealed that Wayne, Trek, Wayne Tech had originally designed the first, the first Batmobile as an armored vehicle to be used by whom? Um... I don't know the answer to this one, and I also am questioning which Batman number zero that was in, because there have been two now, and this was written after the second one came out, I think. So, not a particularly well-worded question, but I'm going to assume that it was by the police, uh, or for the police, um, just as a guess. So, the police! 95. SWAT teams. So, does police count? I think it does. Cool. Um, 96. According to a story by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, um, Bruce Wayne and Lucius Fox first met in another city when Bruce saved the man from muggers. What city was this? I should know the answer to this, but I don't have any idea. So I'll say Metropolis. 96. Paris. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> um, I'm kind of embarrassed. I feel like, I mean, that's probably from one of the like Halloween specials or something, but I, I just don't remember. Uh, question 97. In the 1950s, Batman occasionally worked with a dog named Ace. To protect the dog's identity, Batman gave Ace a mask and referred to him by what name? Um, I mean, he was Ace the Bat-Hound, so I assume they're looking for Bat-Hound. Um, which, yeah, the Bat-Hound. So. I feel like they never call them just the Bat-Hound, though. They always call him Ace the Bat-Hound. Like, I never heard them just say, hey, Bat-Hound, or whatever. But whatever. Um, the question number 98, almost there. What trick concerning handwriting does Batman use to emphasize the ruse that Bruce Wayne and the Dark Knight are different people? He's, ambidext he's ambidextrous, so he switches hands. Um, 98. Batman is left-handed, Bruce Wayne is right-handed. So I guess that's a wordier way of just saying he's ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. Question number 99. Uh, the dog Ace from question 97 wore a mask to hide his distinguishing mark on his head. What was the shape of this mark? Um, in post-crisis continuity, and so I guess it says, the thing is there's two different things that it could be. Um, Ace, the bat hound from the 50s, had he had a star on his head, which is kind of whatever. But then in post-crisis continuity, like in those, what are those, that, I think those were part of the Alan Grant run, when he reintroduced Bat Hound, he reintroduced him with a bat symbol on his head. Um, but I'm assuming they're looking for Star, because question 97 is specifically referring to the 1950s, so we'll say Star. Yeah, a star. So, um... There you go. <laughs> and then question number 100. Lots of Ace questions. Who is Ace's original owner in pre-crisis continuity? Um, I don't know. In post-crisis continuity, it was um, Black Wolf or whatever. Um, when he went to, when Bruce Batman went to San Francisco, it was kind of, I, I reviewed that issue in my Modern History of Batman, which it wasn't my favorite, um, but I have no idea who pre-crisis originally owned. The Bat Hound. It was a person named Jim Wilker. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's tally them up, guys. I believe there's four wrong this time. One, two, three, four. Yes. So we scored a 21 out of 25, which puts us at a 79 out of 100. We are one question away from being in, back in the low Bs. Right now, still getting a high C. Tune in again soon. We'll do another 25 questions. Only two more rounds. And we have completed um, the first section called The Dark Knight Himself. And we'll be able to know um, how awesome we really are. And for the record, this is kind of what we're going for. It says at the end of the, uh, at the end here, 
what scores you should be shooting for. So um, score your bat knowledge. In this section, there's 145 possible right answers. If we get 0 through 73 right, you've got a lot of learning to do. I'm really excited because we already have more than 73 right, so that's good. If you get a 74 through 114, you're a detective in the making, but you're not smart enough. I don't know if we'll hit 114. It's going to be tough. Um, I was looking at some of the questions in the next couple of chunks, and there, it gets hard. There are some of them I definitely am not going to know the answer to. But if we can score 115 or more, then congratulations. We know the Batman almost as well as we, he knows himself. So we can find a cape and wear it with pride because we've earned it. So that's what we're going for. Let's see if we can get to 115. I don't know if I can, but I bet some of you guys out there can. I hope you're still enjoying these videos. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, yada, 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 yada. See you later.